Bad Camp. My Morning. name. Morning. I hope everyone is here to learn about the state of Drupal 9 because if you are, you are in the right place. Let's see if things are working. Worked a second ago. It's always like the test worked and then. <laughs> did you push the red button? I did. <laughs> all right, that's all right. I'll use the arrow. Okay, nothing's working. <clears throat> wow. I love Google Slides. Let me try this again. <clears throat> okay. Interesting. So, sorry about that. <laughs> My name is Amber Matz. I work at OCO Labs, uh, the creators of Drupalize Me and HeyNode.com, as a content production manager and trainer. And I'm here to tell you about the state of Drupal 9. To understand the state of Drupal 9, let's first look at how innovation is done in Drupal to put Drupal 9 into context. Drupal 8 introduced three key concepts to the process that allowed innovation to happen within Drupal 8. Semantic versioning, scheduled releases, and experimental modules. Is everything working? Okay, good. Drupal started using semantic versioning with Drupal 8.0.0 in semantic versioning, that first number is the major version in which breaking changes from previous major versions are introduced as well as new features and APIs. The second number is the minor release version in which new backward compatible features are introduced. The third number is the patch release which is used for security and bug fixes. The main opportunity for innovation here is that middle number, the second one, the minor release, in which new features can be introduced, but they're backward compatible within the major version. These minor releases are on a schedule. Every six months, a new minor version of Drupal is released. This means that new features are regularly introduced and development of new features from Drupal for Drupal can continue throughout the life cycle of the major release, not just in the years preceding it. Contributions end up on users' sites much faster than before. Feedback is provided more quickly, so direction can be adjusted. One of the vehicles for introducing new features in Drupal is experimental modules. Experimental modules are still backward compatible within the major version, but they provide new functionality in an incremental way. The new features continue in development until all its planned features are implemented. This gives the community a chance to give feedback to the maintainers and test out the new functionality on real sites. <clears throat> Combined, semantic versioning, scheduled releases, and experimental modules enabled us to add exciting new features in Drupal's minor releases. For example, 8.6.0 added new experimental modules, media library, workspaces, and multilingual migrations. Also released were stable versions of the Umami demo and monolingual migrations. In 8.7.0, Layout Builder became stable, and JSON API was added as a brand new stable module, while the experimental media library module was hugely improved. There's also optional support for Twig 2 in Drupal itself. Unfortunately, due to how Composer works and how people are using Composer for the most part, this can't actually be used yet. For example, if you're using the Drupal Composer project without the Webflow Drupal Core Strict virtual de uh, package that causes you to get exactly the versions of Drupal's core dependencies as they are specified in Drupal Core's Composer JSON file, if core updates the allowed Twig version to 2, then most people running Composer Update would immediately get Twig 2 and their themes will likely break very badly and it would be very bad and very sad. So there would be tears and <laughs> gnashing of teeth and, you know, there would be a lot of problems. So we cannot just update it. We did not find a safe way to do this given the way people use Composer right now. So we'll only actually be able to do this on a Drupal 9 branch. And we're going to talk more about updating third-party dependencies shortly. The core code remains Twig 2 compliant 
and we run automated tests to prove that. Innovation will continue with Drupal 8.8.0. Plans include improvements to workspaces, layouts, media library, and more. So if we can do all of these things, why not continue on Drupal 8 forever? Unfortunately, that is not possible. If we can accomplish so much innovation in Drupal 8, why do we need Drupal 9 at all? Drupal 9 is a streamlined Drupal 8. It's a cleanup release. We need to update some third-party dependencies in which security issues or bugs from those libraries will, will not get fixed anymore because we expose APIs of those third-party dependencies. Updating them means we break our APIs, so we need to increase our major version to Drupal 9. We can and should use this opportunity to clean up our own code base as well and remove old code that we don't need anymore. Here are some of the key dependencies. Drupal 8 depends on Symfony 3, CK Editor 4, jQuery 3.2, and Twig 1, among many other third-party software libraries. This is great in that we can utilize other well-known open source libraries and we don't need to reinvent a bunch of wheels. However, these dependencies have their own life cycles, which we need to respect and plan with. Some of the de dependencies will need to be updated. By the way, if you're curious about what these dependencies are, all of them, you can see drupal.org slash core slash dependencies for an annotated list. Symphony 3 is our biggest dependency and has the soonest end of life that we need to consider. We could fork Symphony 3 to support it longer, but we don't want to do that. We want to move to Symphony 4 or 5 instead. The November 2021 end of life of Symphony 3 therefore means end of life of Drupal 8 as well. Given that, we should release Drupal 9 in the year prior to give enough time for sites to update. Our planned release date is June 3rd alongside Drupal 8.9.0. Drupal 9 support will start and continue on from then. While there are other dependencies that may dictate dates, those are further in the future so we can update them on this timeline ahead of them becoming sensitively timed. Drupal exposes the APIs of most third-party dependencies, so in these cases, a major version of core is required for dependency updates because they come with usually significant API changes to our own API. We are not planning to update CK Editor for Drupal 9.0.0, given the hugely different architecture of CK Editor 5. We do plan to, to include CK Editor 5 as an optional feature later in Drupal 9 and remove CK Editor 4 in Drupal 10. There is no new release from jQuery yet to update to. We do plan to update Twig from version 1 to 2 for Drupal 9.0.0. Putting these back together, Drupal 8.9.0 is planned to re be released the same time as 9.0.0 and will be supported until November 2021. There will be no new features going from Drupal 8.9.0 to 9.0.0. Two minor releases a year are planned for Drupal 9, as we've been doing with Drupal 8. New features will again be introduced from 9.1.0 forward. So, how long will Drupal 9 go forward? Now, no one have a heart attack here. We're already <laughs> talking about Drupal 10. Don't worry. The estimated end of life of Drupal 9 is the end of 2023. This largely depends on third-party dependencies again, and some of that information is unknown still. Based on which Symfony version we are adopting in Drupal 9, 4 or 5, and how long CK Editor will be supported are the two t key components that we're looking at. Oh. <laughs> Let's talk about how Drupal 8.9.0 becomes Drupal 9.0.0. The process actually started much earlier. In the past, major code 
major versions were brand new code bases. While this was in some ways very exciting as it allowed Core to change whatever it wanted, it also resulted in huge sets of changes and an entirely new code base that modules and sites needed to move to. As you know, this was expensive. It is similar to needing to move from a train that could only run on one track to a new track by taking the train apart and putting it back together on that new track with new parts replacing some old ones. It was not only hard for contributed modules and site owners, but even core developers because whatever it was that they were working on only got released several years later. A lot of people experienced burnout because of this process. Instead of needing to move tracks and trains and take things apart, now major versions are derived from previous major versions. We are building Drupal 9 and Drupal 8 directly. This is where the fourth major process for innovation in Drupal comes in, deprecations. We mark changes we want to make in the future in the code base so people can prepare for that change while still using the same code base. Let's see how they work. On an abstract level, Drupal 8's API consists of various components. So these boxes represent these various components. Let's see what happens. When we want to improve something, we add a new better solution and mark the old solution to be removed by deprecating it. As we do more and more of these, we accumulate a lot of future changes where the new code is already in the code base, but we keep the old code for backward compatibility. The same happens in our third party dependencies like Symphony 3. This is how we arrive at Drupal 8.9. Because we kept all of the deprecated solutions, we provide backward compatibility up to that point. This is where Drupal 9 comes in. We drop the deprecated solutions and keep the new ones only. Likewise, we update the third party dependencies where it makes sense. Such as for Symphony, we update it to Symphony 4 or 5. There is no definite decision yet between Symphony 4 or 5 as it depends a great deal on how much disruption Symphony 5 will bring. Drupal 8.7.0 is very close to being optionally Symphony 4 compatible. In other words, Drupal 9 is basically the same as Drupal 8 except we remove the deprecated parts and update third party dependencies. This means that modules keeping up with removing uses of deprecated APIs themselves will be Drupal 9 compatible. Updating code to Drupal 9 is much easier than in previous major updates. Future changes are introduced gradually without them being actual breaking changes at the time. All the new code is already running live in Drupal 8 sites and those new solutions get battle tested before Drupal 9 is released. People can follow along with the changes rather than doing it all at once in a big bang. The same process will continue in Drupal 9. Let's look at how you can keep up with these changes. Drupal has patterns and processes to introduce deprecations and you can follow those to keep up with changes in Drupal 8 on the way to Drupal 9. And we'll cover Drupal 7 sites in a little bit. You should do this regardless of your plans for Drupal 9. Drupal Core and some contributed modules are actively being updated to remove uses of deprecated APIs, so you are gradually becoming Drupal 9, a Drupal 9 user by keeping up to date with Drupal 8. So just a warning, the following few slides are for developers, but if you are a site owner or project manager or something, this is something that you can communicate to your devs so that you can make some plans and keep track of status of your sites and where they're at in terms of Drupal 9 preparedness. Let's take a look at an example of a deprecated function. We made file unmanaged copy deprecated and introduced a service instead in Drupal 8.7.0. So there are various benefits. The service has a defined interface, so no hunting is needed for related file functions. The service implementation can be swapped for alternate implementations, unlike a global function. The service can be mocked for testing, 
The code can be auto-loaded and not necessarily in memory all the time. And the implementation is more in line with the rest of Drupal's API style. We do keep the old API around though and implement it in a backwards compatible way using the new API internally. This allows all existing Drupal 8 code to keep working while the new API is already available. Let's look at how we make this deprecation happen. The two key tools we use to mark a future change are the at deprecated annotation and the at trigger error function call. Both tell developers that this function is deprecated and what to use instead. Not all deprecations can come with an at deprecated annotation, such as hooks and some specific code paths, and not all of them can come with a at trigger error function like constants. The annotation is useful for static analysis tools, and the at trigger error function is great for runtime and automated testing to catch use of deprecated code. There are a few tools already out there that you can use to find out if you're using deprecated code. If you're a, a PHP Storm user, you may have already noticed this. So IDEs like PHP Storm will strike through uses of deprecated code in the editor, making it apparent to the developer that they're using code that is going to be removed in the next major release. Matt Lehman at Centaro, formerly Commerce Guys, built Drupal-check. This wraps a library called PHP Stan with Drupal integration to check for deprecation errors and more things. Here we download it from GitHub to run it locally. You can find this tool at mglayman or at github.com slash mglayman slash Drupal hyphen check. Then we execute it on the core path module. Yes, core does still use deprecated code itself, unfortunately. It's in progress and contributors are welcome. When it is done, results are presented in a straightforward overview. Drupal Check can also be integrated in continuous integration environments to track and ensure compatibility. For those that are looking for an integrated UI solution instead of a command line tool, the Drupal 8 branch of Upgrade Status Module provides a UI on top of Drupal Check and even some more goodies. You can scan any subset of your projects at once. Drupal 9 plan information provided by the project maintainer is displayed directly on this overview, so you know how to best engage with the maintainer to fix issues. Available updates for contributed modules are also presented to make it easier to keep up to date. You can export, export the results of a subset of projects or a single project as well, and you could you know, create a beautiful spreadsheet with the upgrade status of the modules on your site, which would be great for planning. Issues that are found are categorized as either warnings or errors. Warnings include uses of deprecated APIs that are not yet possible to remove in a contributed module because of supported core versions. Issues where the deprecation version number cannot be identified or some other error happened, like a PHP parsing error in this example, are also classified as warnings. Errors are issues that can already be resolved. You can fix them yourself in your custom code or work with the module maintainer to fix those based on the issue link or other plan information provided for contributed projects. You can check out this module at drupal.org slash project slash upgrade underscore status and use the Drupal 8 branch for usage and installation instructions. For module maintainers, any uh, drupal.org contributed module maintainers here? Good, okay, this is for you. There are drupal.org tools to help prepare for Drupal 9 as well. You can use this drupalci.yml sample in an issue to verify compatibility and or commit to a project branch. You can enable static analysis with PHP Stan in this configuration file. This will report deprecation testing results, similar to Drupal check, as part of the test bot results. You can make tests fail if any tested code path hits a deprecation trigger error function signifying the use of deprecated code. This will fail if one of your dependencies uses deprecated code as well. 
To learn how to use Drupal CI.yml to customize Drupal CI testing in your Drupal.org project, you can read the docs. I made a shortened link that will redirect you, and it's bit.ly slash custom hyphen Drupal CI. Dejo Bitso at Pronovix built a proof of concept based on Rector to automate fixing some deprecations. So you only need to review the suggested fixes and then uh, have, them have the tool fix it. In this example, the automated fixer converts Drupal set message to the right methods on the messenger service. So that can be super handy. You can see bit.ly slash Drupal 8 hyphen Rector to learn more about this project. Okay, so now that we know about some of these tools, let's talk about whether you should actually fix them, whether and which deprecations should be acted on immediately. For custom code, this is for your custom modules, update as fast as feasible. You get to use the latest APIs with a code base that is as close to Drupal 9 as possible. For contributed modules, consider that Drupal core supports two minor versions at the same time. So after Drupal 8.7, the previous 8.6.0 branch is also supported until the release of Drupal 8.8. .8. You should not yet act on deprecations that require new APIs that would not work on all supported versions. So you need to wait until the previous minor version will be compatible with the new API. As of July 31st, 2019, based on testing of all Drupal contributed projects, 76% of the uses of deprecated API uses can already be removed. So that's a lot of work that we can start doing right now. Contributed projects can now specify their Drupal 9 plans, so maintainers can provide guidance to contributors on how to contribute best. This is gonna be a huge target for events like this that are doing sprints, so it's really great. If you're a, a project owner, update your Drupal 9 plans on your project page so that people that are planning sprints can uh, know what to do and how, how best to help you update your module. The next question is, when do we know all of the work that needs to be done? Other than absolutely necessary cases, Drupal 8.8 .8 will be the last release to deprecate for Drupal 9. So you will have six months to update while knowing the complete list of deprecations to be ready on day one of Drupal 9. Another crucial question for contributed modules is when and if to create a 9.x hyphen 1.x branch for your project. Don't do that. So the answer is no, do not do that. The plan is to make it possible for 8.x modules to also be 9.x compatible with a simple info file change. This removes a lot of potential pain and you won't have any need to maintain multiple branches of both Drupal 8 and Drupal 9 on your project. So let's see how we would do this. As of Drupal 8.7.7, the new core underscore version underscore requirement key in info.yml files for modules and themes now supports semantic version, ver semantic versioning as implemented by the Composer project. So this means that modules and themes can declare which versions of Drupal core they're compatible with, and it also allows for more granular control than the core key. With core version compatibility, a theme or module can declare major, minor, and patch version compatibility, including compatibility with more than one major version. So that's pretty exciting. By the way, a quick plug, on Drupalize Me, we have a free tutorial on writing info files, and I've just recently updated that tutorial to include information about this new key with links to the change release and more information. So previously, it's been a problem that contributed modules did not update in a timely fashion for Drupal 8. At MidCamp 2019, Dwayne McDaniel ran reports of all contributed modules and looked at the stats as they were then. So this was back in the spring. More recently, the Drupal Association ran the same process on modules and found even better results. Dwayne found that almost half the modules had no Drupal 9 compatibility issues detectable with Drupal check, 
while 35% had five or less. This will change both as modules get updated and as court introduces some more deprecations and our tooling improves, but the results are still really encouraging. Most of the deprecations are easy fixes, so if you own a module, go ahead and take a look. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Mid-campers also opened issues for the top 300 projects with deprecations reports, so your module might already have an issue against it. Drupal.org is in the process to run this report weekly on supported Drupal 8 projects. The numbers show definite improvement since March. See bit.ly slash drupalci dash php stand for some preliminary results. And for Dwayne's report, see bit.ly slash d9 hyphen module hyphen ready. So one of the frequently asked questions, I've given this presentation a couple of times now, and one of the remaining questions around Drupal 9 upgrades is around Twig 2 and checking to see if a theme is using deprecated Twig functionality. Currently, there aren't any tools like Drupal Check that can analyze a theme's template files and check for use of de deprecated Twig code. An issue has been opened to address this issue of tooling, which you should follow or contribute to if you are a theme developer. And here's a, a short link that will redirect you to that issue. dgo.to slash 3054924. So the answer is no, there's not a tool yet, but you should look at this issue and keep track of it and keep an eye on that, because that will be an issue for theme developers. As we discussed, innovation does not happen with the new major version itself. It's about cleaning our house. People should not expect innovation from 9.0.0. Core succeeded if the update was as uneventful as possible. The easy upgrade path is the great new feature of Drupal 9. This is what you always, never knew you always wanted, or whatever the, the, the phrase is. Okay, so. What happens to Drupal 7, right? Still a lot of Drupal 7 sites out there. Drupal 9 is planned to be released June 3rd, 2020. Historically, at that point, we would drop support for the second version back, and we would only keep supporting Drupal 8 and drop support for Drupal 7. However, we extended the Drupal 7 support timeframe to the end of Drupal 8, so it will also end November 2021. If that is not enough for you, there will also be commercial security support from vendors on a contractual basis in collaboration with the Drupal security team. This will be provided until at least 2024. This same model worked very well for Drupal 6 extended support, so much so that a vendor is still providing that until February 2022 for Drupal 6. That's cool. So bringing all the details together, this is what the dates and support cycles look like. Note that we plan to support three major versions of Drupal at once. Seven, eight, and nine for an overlap of a year and a half. For you. To allow for an easier transition. Don't forget, it's for you by you. It's for you by you. We love you guys. And everyone. Okay, while there will be various support options, we recommend you update now to Drupal 8. There are various good reasons to do so, and here are a few. There's some really great features that have been introduced in Drupal 8. It's a great product, and it has a lot more out of the box than Drupal 7 ever did. These are the main tools to help you update from Drupal 7 to 8. For contributed modules, upgrade status provides a summary. For your custom code, Drupal module upgrader gives you a head start. For your content and even some configuration, the migrate module and core and the associated tools and add-ons provide a solution for you. None of these will work 100% perfectly as each site is different and there's no denying, no one is saying that it will that updating for Drupal 7 will not be trivial, right? So that's why migrate, we're all talking about migrate all the time still, right? It's a big deal. However, once you're on Drupal 8, 
future updates will be way easier. Here's some links to those uh, modules that I just mentioned. So drupal.org slash project slash upgrade underscore status. Drupal.org slash project slash Drupal module upgrader all run together. And the docs for migrate, uh, a starting point would be Drupal.org slash docs slash eight slash upgrade slash Drupal hyphen eight hyphen migrate hyphen modules. You got all that? Okay. Once you're on Drupal 8, the upgrade to Drupal 9 will be much easier. As we mentioned, I keep repeating that. It's a theme here. Are you catching the message? Okay. As we mentioned earlier, almost half of the Drupal 8 modules had no known Drupal 9 incompatibility as of July 2019. And some, uh, most, had very simple issues. Simple. Uh, because Drupal 9 will be basically Drupal 8 streamlined, trying to skip updating Drupal 8 isn't going to bring any benefits. Skipping Drupal 8 would mean that you have less time to execute the upgrade and therefore more risk in your project. Doing the upgrade to Drupal 8 with an eye to Drupal 9 is the best approach. You can already benefit from all of the goodness in Drupal 8, including the easier upgrade paths going forward. On top of the contributed modules, if you use Drupal check for any custom code written in the Drupal 7 to 8 upgrade, you already ensure your custom code will be Drupal 9 compatible. Okay, so let's recap the key points. Drupal innovates twice a year and will continue to do so. Drupal 9 is built in Drupal 8 step by step. If you keep up with Drupal 8, you will be prepared for an easy path to nine. For Drupal seven sites, there's no reason to wait until Drupal nine. You're just, I don't know, it's just not true. Okay, there's no real benefit. So you can say all you like that you wanna just wait to Drupal nine, but let's, you're just procrastinating. <laughs> so, Maybe your boss is just procrastinating. Yeah, you know, yeah, anyway, there's no real benefit. Uh, vendors will offer extended Drupal 7 support. The, anyone can give this presentation. So Gabor developed these slides. I took these slides. I gave this presentation at GovCon. I'm giving it here. I gave it at my local meetup. You can find the original slides here. They'll be relevant for a little bit longer. So if you want to give this talk at your local meetup, you should do so. And you can always uh, ping me if you have questions, or you can ping Gabor on Twitter as well. So the original slides are, is that first link, this deck, I've included a few extra slides with the links, um, is, is that second link, and the documentation for Drupal 9 is at drupal.org slash docs slash 9. Thank you to these folks for the various pretty things and content in this deck. And a P, uh, let's see, you can tweet me at, at Amber Himes Mats, especially if you're polite and respectful. And um, <laughs> only if, I should say. And if you have any questions about, about this, uh, the, what I presented here. So here's that timeline. And uh, I'll just keep this up here. And what are your questions? Yes. Uh, what is, for, I, I realize we're only going on what was done for Drupal 6, but what are the, co the costs involved in co commercial security support, extended life? I don't want to do extended life, but just in case people I would, say, why can't we do the extended life? Um, isn't it my drop wizard who's the vendor there, I believe? I would get in touch with them and ask. My drop wizard is the name of the company, I believe. So yes. if there are if there are, for example, if you're using Drupal 7 larger support, will the security updates be released to the public as well? Like uh, will there be a, an LTS branch that so if you haven't contracted with a vendor to do support for you, will those be released? It, open source? So are you, uh, so your question is, uh, there's construction noise, so I want to make sure I heard it. So if you're on Drupal 7, will there be security updates? Yes. Yeah. So there will, we'll be supporting Drupal 7, 8, and 9 for an overlap of one year. 
And so that means security releases. But for the LTS, once the LTS kicks in, so let's say it's oh, past yeah. November 2021, somebody contracts with a vendor, somebody finds a security update, they patch it, will that patch be released to the open source? Um, does anyone know if that has been the case with Mauricio? Uh, <coughs> at this, at this point, point six, that has been the case, the patch is released publicly. The one thing is that support is only available for the projects that people contract to. So if you are using a project that none of the you know people using this service ever uses, you will never get that support. Right. So yes, it, you know you, the community benefit itself from getting the budget, but only from the models that you know they are offering support for, like the clients that. Okay, so I think what Mauricio is saying is that if you're if you're a client with my drop wizard, and there's a set of sites that are being supported, the modules that are on those sites are the ones that are being checked for security releases, and so patches, security patches to those only would be released for you know to to the public. So it doesn't mean like every module ever in Drupal 6 is being supported. Only the modules of the clients of the vendor, right? Is that what you're saying? Okay. So I would definitely, like if you've got older sites and you're going beyond like the, the official support and you're not going to upgrade ever, then, you know, it's like a cost benefit, right? Paying for maintenance versus paying for the upgrade to Drupal 8 and 9. Uh, new question, yeah. Can you clarify that, you know, like, strategy of upgrading to Drupal 8 first and then to 9? Yes. I'm trying to upgrade, you know, the biggest problem I have is the compatibility of some of the modules that I use in Drupal 7. Okay. And I have to look for those modules that make changes in Drupal 8, right? Right. If I have to do a Drupal 8 and then the next thing, of course, the 9.0 is easy, but then the 9.1, I have to start doing the whole thing over again. Like, wouldn't it be easier to keep Drupal 7 and then when 9 comes out, just skip the Drupal 8? So what we're saying is that, so the seven. question is, can you clarify, you know, like seriously, why would I not wait till Drupal 9? I have to check for compatibility with my Drupal 7 modules for with Drupal 8. I'm going to have to do that again with Drupal 9. What's the point of not waiting to Drupal 9. Well, as I'm trying to explain is that Drupal 8 has this deprecation process. The, the new API has already been introduced in Drupal 8. The old code is marked as deprecated. And then once you get past the, core, the supported minor versions, the old, the old 8 way of doing it is removed. And when you get to Drupal 9, the deprecations are removed and you just have the API. So in Drupal 8, you're already using the new API. The contributed module that you're using is already using the Drupal, is, is uh, quite possibly already using the Drupal 9 API. So it's, you're already becoming Drupal 9 compatible by using Drupal 8. So there's not like, is that, is that, am I not being clear? Yeah. So it's what's different about the last minor release of Drupal 8 and the first release of Drupal 9 is that the deprecated code is removed and the third party dependencies are updated. Okay, but the new APIs are all that will be used in Drupal 9 are already in Drupal 8 code base. Yeah, I, I just need to clarify. I'm, I'm not a developer. Uh huh. Okay. I'm no problem. Use, yeah. Right. Yeah. So the major thing is that if I see a module in Drupal Seven, I like to see the same thing supported in Drupal Eight. Mm -hmm. Okay. If sure. If it's an Eight, you know, that's no problem, right? Right. And those are the things that depend on the API, but the contributor may not be ready to do anything, so I'm stuck. Well, you but. You're probably not, because as Dwayne find out, found out, and as Drupal.org is finding out, there's not a lot of mo contributed modules that have issues. 
with Drupal 9 compatibility, and the issues that do exist are minor. So the whole big thing, remember who was around for Drupal 7 to 8, right? The big deal was like, when is this module going to be ready? For, you know, and it took months, it took maybe more than a year, you know, maybe some are still, but right now, like the transition between Drupal 8 and 9 is that the new API is already in Drupal 8. It's backward compatible, like if you're still using the deprecated function, the global function, the hook or whatever, instead of the service, it's still going to work. So when you run Drupal check or you run any of these tools, you're gonna be able to see, oh, this function is now deprecated. Oh, and there's a new service here. I'm gonna learn how to implement this service. Instead, I'm gonna take out all my Drupal set message functions and I'm gonna use the messenger service instead. I'm gonna drop those in. You can even use this rector tool to do it for me automatically. That's pretty awesome, right? And now I'm using the new API in my Drupal 8 site. Drupal 8, Drupal 9, I'm like ready to go for, for that, for my uh, custom code. And a lot of contributed modules are, they, they're already like getting ready to go. So they're removing uses of the deprecated code and they're using the new whatever, usually a service, right? Yes, question in the back. I understand this situation correctly. He's, yeah, so Drupal, if you're using Drupal 7 modules that never got updated to Drupal 8, what you're going to be looking at is, okay, like really what is the functionality of this? You, you need to expand your, your analysis of compatibility. So instead of like just giving up if there's not a Drupal 8 branch, you have to look at, well, what is this module doing? And expand your Google Foo a little bit to, to fit, you know, ask on Slack or ask other people, ask your local meetup, like, okay, well, I was using this module for this functionality. What are people doing for that now? You know, and maybe it's, maybe it's a, a different name. It's a module with a different name. I think the biggest or problem. Or some custom code, yeah. yeah. The fact that you know you have a database mm -hmm. that you use another module, you know, like functionally maybe program or better, then you have to look into your database and then convert the database from one to another. Mm -hmm. And then also there's some other programs like Drush, for instance. Mm -hmm. I don't know from seven to eight is there a major change in the Drush? That's like a different presentation altogether. No, so we're not going to talk so about like migrate analysis and Drush and all of that. You, there's like plenty of people that can talk your ear about that. Are there any other questions about um, this? Yes. Oh great! Do you know what they are? No, I don't know off the top of my head. I bet that DuckDuckGo I know. So yeah. Tag one. Tag one and my drop wizard and anyone else? Yeah. Uh, question. Come back. Do you know the status of the new administration theme? Oh, what is it? Claro. Claro. Uh, I know what I've only I've seen on Twitter. Okay. Yeah. And, and yesterday, and you can certainly install it. It looks like there are a number of issues that are blocking it at this point from being a point more than that. Though I don't know. Gotcha. Yeah. So the question was about the administrative. This is for the recording. The question was about the the new admin theme, Claro. So. If you're interested in that, look it up on Drupal.org. Um, there's some various Twitter accounts that are tweeting about Drupal 8 changes, so you can follow those as well. Yep. Um, I think we got to wrap up. Thank you so much. I'll be around um, today and tomorrow if you have additional questions. Thank you.